Welcome to the Practical Ascension Podcast. I am your host and guide, Tracy Goody. Join me as we navigate this transition into the new earth and find our place and role as the divine human. Subscribe, rate, or leave a review to show your support. It is Mission on Lightworkers. Five keys to co-creation in times of transition. Beyond manifesting, tapping in to anchor your visions of life. So as part of my new Ascension Shaman series, The Divine Human, uh, I'm going to be facilitating a small group over the next 13 weeks. That's what Divine Human is. So as part of that, a transmission has come through with an update on co-creating. So this is a really fun area for me to explore because years and years ago, probably, uh, you know, around a decade ago, I took my Law of Attraction Life Coach uh, training and of course, my understanding of universal laws has shifted greatly from there. So what I'm looking at today, this is not manifesting in the way that has been really shared over the last few decades, but it's more of an individual and collective approach that's designed especially for light workers, uh, change makers, shamans, energy, healers, starseeds, and really everyone who would put themselves in the category of here to assist humanity through this time of transition. So this is exactly for for who these keys are designed. This transmission came through as five keys to understand and practice that will allow divine magic and miracles to unfold in your life and in the collective simultaneously. So this approach is very centered on that multi-level benefit. So you're helping yourself, you're helping the collective. Um, That's a big part of the divine human uh, transmission that's come through as well. So you already know that as you evolve and ascend, you are helping yourself and you are adding increasing light to collective consciousness. You are effectively assisting with ascension and reharmonizing densities just by working on yourself. So the entire Divine Human series really focuses on that mutually beneficial energy. And as we anchor and work with the collective of humanity, we come into a deeper state of radiance, clarity, and embodiment of our soul truth. It really is this win-win energy that is centered in on calling to both, you know, enjoy, have the most fun and magical and inspiring life possible and be of great service to the collective and the planet. So today I'm going to give a little bit of a sneak peek into these five keys of co-creation uh, in times of transition, times of transition. Like that's really key. Like it's, it's for right now. Um, if you're curious to explore them a little bit deeper, you can learn more about the divine human. I'll put the link for that in the show notes below. All right, so let's move on to the actual keys here. So I have five of them to share with you today. Key number one is be studious in your approach. So when I first received this, I had to Google the word studious to make sure I knew what it meant. And after that, this key has really unfolded and exploded into all the ways seeing yourself as a student amplifies your ability to be a conduit of divine co-creation. So in this key, we're exploring how and why to be a student of life and leaning into the lessons and teachings that are all around you. There is so much power in this space. There is so much power in this space. So this key asks you to be a student of life and master of non-ordinary reality. Um, And I feel called to mention this here as well is take what resonates and leave the rest. And I say this for all of my teachings all the time. Don't necessarily feel like you need to absorb all the information. See what jumps out at you and sit with that and work with that because whatever jumps out to you is going to be a key for you. So this first key is calling on your perception to widen and go multidimensional. So to use your inner knowing and desired focus areas to orient yourself into what you're observing. You are not here to control your reality. You're here to know, understand, and flow with all the divine intelligence, the gifts, the desires, and the visions that color your desired reality. So know that you have everything you need within you. And I feel like I repeat this sentence, know that you have everything you need within you quite a bit. And I think even a few times through these keys here, yet it's not your role to slay every beast and climb every mountain you encounter. So just meaning that not every fight is your fight to fight. Not, not every path is your path to, to, to walk. Understand and get to know your path so you may more deeply embody your role. This key goes on to remind us that you are a student, not a director. Sometimes you might be a conductor or an observer, but you're always also a student. Your higher consciousness is in collaboration with other beings of pure light, and they are directing source light, that you know, divine God, whatever you resonate with there. 
that's that's the director. So you can let that go. They are very experienced and every single thing for them is always going to move in divine perfection. So you can just let go of that responsibility of directing and you are going to be releasing pressure from yourself, suffering, struggle, and desire for control. And you're going to open wider for divine miracles to transpire as an ordinary part of your life whenever you do this. So when you are studious, studious in your approach, divine miracles find their way to you. There's nothing more magnetic than a student of earth who is claiming their path and role with trust. You have absolutely everything you need within you now for this key to unfold. So remember your studious approach. Okay, so again, just giving you little tiny sneak peeks of these keys here so you have some idea and it may spark something within you, something to focus on, something uh, to practice, something to play with. So key number two is honor your divine integrity. And this key is all about all parts of the self. So using and honoring all parts and pieces of yourself, looking at integrity in this case as meaning like solid, like with all the pieces supporting and working together. Then again, you can also look at integrity uh, from the lens of integrity as truth. So you are centered in the truth of who you are. Both of them work. Um, who all of humanity also has the potential to be. So this goes well beyond self-acceptance or thinking that only the light and bright parts of you are of value. This key encourages you to come into alignment with your inner light as equally as exploration of the darkness and densities and old program parts. So it's really this harmony with all of it. So this key encourages supporting and caring for all parts of yourself and living the process of bringing all parts of you together, knowing that you are, and this is very key, knowing that you are much greater than the sum of your parts, knowing that in honoring your divine integrity, you're also helping the collective to heal. You're not trying to turn away from the parts of you that are not fun to look at or 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 are painful even to look at you're not trying to turn away from that you're embracing it and pulling it in with love with acceptance and just think about the implication of that for the collective if all of humanity if the collective were to not turn away from the challenging parts were to embrace them fully and completely how quickly would so many of our world issues resolve so again you're mirroring what you want to see happen in the collective All right, key number three, trust your higher judgment and embody your higher self. Nothing brand new about this. It's just the key and the reminder. The guidance coming through is for us to really, really practice this, really just make it a normal part of life. And this is this is kind of what most of my teachings are about. It's practical ascension. Like we want to bring it into life. It's not about having, you know, to go away on a retreat to connect to the sacred and to and to bring that divine miracles into your life. It's about just having them. They're just part of your life. It's just normal. So this key encourages us into awareness of our human reactions and divine human responses. So you practice in your own life what this key means for you. And the more you practice and see the evidence, the more you will want to practice it because it really um, rolls things out pretty pretty amazing um, for you to experience here. So you're setting an example for yourself. You're setting an example for those around you, for your community, but for the collective by working with your higher self and incorporating this aspect into just like mundane areas of your life to witness the transformation and ascension of humanity. So there's an aspect to this key that reminds you to follow what's highest and best for you and for the collective and release the pressure to follow what is logically or socially expected response. So again, here it's it's coming back to the heart. It's coming back to that 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 deeper, that higher part of yourself where Previously, we might be like, oh, I, I wouldn't want to do that or say something there as I'm, you know, I might be embarrassed or that's not kind of like socially what's what's expected of me. But instead, you're kind of breaking free of that and you're saying, wait a minute, what's what's really being called for you here? And then as you start to follow those steps of what's really being called for, what you feel and you have discerned that's coming from that inner knowing of yourself, that's whenever synchronicities really will start to ramp up. So you are asked by this key to break your comfort patterns for greater divine integrity and integration with who you really are. Again, there's there's a lot of energy in each of these keys. So just take what resonates and leave the rest. So key number four is honor your desires and your path. 
again, like not there's, I'm not sharing any shocking information here. It's reminders and it's focuses that create a big impact. So this key is really twofold. Uh, our soul desires and our gifts and abilities go hand in hand. They go right together. Like it's, it's a package deal. So you are divinely designed with gifts and abilities to ensure that you have everything you need in this lifetime. You have all the codes, all the instructions, all of this is wrapped up into the seed that is your DNA. So there's no question if you have what it takes or the right skill skill set to do what you feel called to do. This is how you were designed. The soul desires are just a part of that design. So by soul desires, I don't just mean, you know, every single thing that passes through your brain. It's not about giving in to every shiny object and delicious treat or coaching program that's in front of you. The key here is discernment. So for you to hold your desires and notice where it originates, notice, is it coming from your heart? Is it coming from your higher self, a deeper part of you? Or is it passing craving that's just coming from the brain? So the more you practice feeling those heart desires and let yourself go all in to explore them, the more you'll feel your heart and inspiration really opening up. And the more you notice what are kind of those brain cravings, I'll call them the shiny objects, the more connected you become to the path and truly calling you and into what is truly calling you and lighting you up. So it's not about being like, well, no, I can't do any of the things that are like the cravings or like the brain things. It's not about that. It's about awareness of them. So you know what can be, what you can let go of and what you can really focus in on, what's going to be most um, inspirational for you to focus in on. So we are all very unique, very, very unique in this category because of, you know, the variety of what we're called to. It's not just about, you know, how much you're called to, or maybe you have a big variety of subjects that you're interested in and a big variety of things that you are moving with and flowing with, or maybe it's very singular in your approach and you have one subject, one theme that you're really going all in on. It, it doesn't matter, you know, how much or how little, but it's an honoring and trusting your own self to show you the way. So the key with with, with this key, you're going to be guided to places that are outside of your ego comfort zone. And that's a theme throughout the keys. You're going to be encouraged to use your unique gifts and abilities on your path. So it's not just about being like, oh, I have this gift. It's about noticing the desires and how those gifts can be applied to that desire. So this can feel challenging or uncomfortable because we are asked with this key to really fully believe in ourselves. And, and it's challenging to do that. Like we need to practice doing that in order to get good at it, in order to be the example. It's all a part of this journey and it's all leading you into a greater collaboration with co-creation in this time of transition. All right. So on to a little snippet of key number five here. So key number five is all about elevating your perception of being and anchoring the new earth timeline. So perception is something that we do see in kind of that traditional law of attraction teachings quite a bit um, as well. But I love this key. Again, nothing new. This key is all about love and light and possibilities and emotions. So a lot of the other keys I've really mentioned, you know, really getting into that density, into that darkness, into those unsavory aspects in order to kind of embrace them all, give them all the love that they need so they can kind of come back together really, really powerfully. So use yourself as an example for this one here for anchoring your vision. This one's all love and light here. <laughs> so we are familiar with visualizing with big expansive emotions and really the power of feeling it and believing it into reality. And this is what we are encouraged to activate within this key to feel it, to know it, to be it on every single level of being, call it into form, see yourself living in a loving, harmonious universe. And what does that entail? What does that mean? What does that look like? What does it feel like? We are asked in this key to call into form and focus on the highest aspects of humanity as often as possible while emoting your intentions of appreciation and awe of what humanity can accomplish. Again, we're pulling in that stream of not only, you know, look at me coming together, look at the miracles in my life, look at the divine in my life, look at all the amazing things that are going on all around me, but we're saying, look at all of the amazing things that are going on with humanity. It's so easy for kind of that darkness and density and violence to get so sensationalized and so kind of like pushed forward to the forefront. But whenever we're calling up all of the beautiful appreciations of humanity, we, we give that 
kind of sensational, um, violent type of energy, less pull. We give it less kind of clout. And then we give more clout to uh, innovation and, and inspiration and all of the good parts of humanity that are coming together. So choose to notice the connections and beauty in humanity. And again, this isn't about shutting out from we're shutting out from reality or the things that are going on. If that's part of your soul desire, there's a cause, there's a specific event, there's something that you feel that soul desire to, that's part of your path. But not every single fight is going to be part of your path. So listen to your soul desires and your gifts because you're going to be led into how you can impact in the highest and best ways. All right, so choose to notice the connections and beauty and humanity in your everyday life as an aspect of this key. So you're seeing, you're feeling, and you're being the change you desire and using your multidimensional gifts to bring it all into form and into fruition. All right, so I shared a ton of information uh, here on this podcast today. So again, take what really jumps out to you. So a quick recap is five keys to co-creation in times of transition are be studious in your approach, trust your higher judgment and embody your higher self, honor your divine integrity, honor your desires and path, elevate your perception of being and anchor the new earth timeline. So if you are called to work more with these energies, you can learn more about the divine human below. And if not tap in and see, you know, where you're being called to explore this, apply this or practice it in your own life. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today.